then sued by EasyJet brand owners change name. A British indie band formerly called Easy Life have changed their name to Hard Life after they said they were sued last year by the brand owners of the EasyJet airline. Writing on Instagram, the Lester group admitted the last nine months have not been easy but they have now released a new single, Tears. Part of the video was included in the social media post. Last October, the musicians said they were going to change their moniker. It came after they said they were sued by Easy Group because their name was too similar. The band said the lawsuit pointed out they had used an image of an orange and white plane, similar to the branding for EasyJet, for their Life's a Beach tour, among other accusations about reputational damage. In a statement at the time, Easy Group founder and chairman Sir Stelios Hagioanu labeled them brand thieves. The band initially hoped to fight the case, which they said would cost hundreds of thousands of pounds, but they were forced to concede defeat, realizing essentially it was David versus Goliath and our British legal system favors Goliath. Their supporters, including fellow musicians such as Professor Green, Arlo Parks and Mahalia, several MPs, plus UK music chair and former deputy labor leader Tom Watson and Tom Gray, the chair of the Ivers Academy argued any similarities were tongue-in-cheek and harmless, with plenty of fans offering to support a crowdfunder to raise money for legal fees. The group themselves said they were certain in no way have we ever affected their business. After their farewell gigs in October in their hometown and London under their original name, they said, thanks so much for celebrating our story with us. See you later, maybe never. Now in a post on Instagram on Wednesday, Hard Life wrote, Hey it's been a while. Safe to say the last nine months haven't been easy. New song tears out now. The critically acclaimed band released their first single in 2017 and has had two top 10 albums. Easy Group was set up in 1998 by Sir Stelios and owns the family of brands under the Easy name. It is the private investment vehicle for Sir Stelios, but each of the brands, including EasyJet and Easy Hotel, are separate companies. <laughs> Amelia Clark feared she would be fired from Game of Thrones. Amelia Clark has admitted she thought she would be fired from Game of Thrones after she suffered a brain bleed. The 37-year-old starred in the fantasy series as Daenerys Targaryen but suffered a brain bleed while working out in a gym in North London in 2011. Clark didn't want to go public with news of her injury and kept it largely a secret from her colleagues on the show. But she admitted she was worried bosses would think she wasn't capable of doing her job after the brain bleed. Doctors also discovered a second brain hemorrhage in 2013, while she was still acting on the series. In a new interview with The Big Issue, she discussed the difficulties of returning to work after her brain injury. Clark said, when you have a brain injury, because it alters your sense of self on such a dramatic level, all of the insecurities you have going into the workplace quadruple overnight. The first fear we all had was, oh my god, am I going to get fired? Am I going to get fired because they think I'm not capable of completing the job? Clark was back working within weeks of her first brain bleed, but she recalled fearing that she was going to die of another hemorrhage because of the stress and pressure of working in front of thousands of people and cameras. She added, well, if I'm going to die, I better die on live TV. After recovering from her injuries, Clark and her mum Jennifer Clark set up a charity to help people with brain injuries. The mother-daughter duo were even made MBEs earlier this year for their work setting up the charity CMU. Clark previously spoke out about how fragile, sensitive and scared she felt after her brain injury. She said she was shocked to find out how understaffed rehabilitation services are with rehab since becoming a focus of her charity. Twin setbacks for Elon Musk over OpenAI and Tesla investor suits. Elon Musk has moved to drop a lawsuit he filed against ChatGPT maker OpenAI and learned he is facing a fresh investor claim relating to his sale of Tesla shares. 
the tech billionaire, who had launched his complaint early this year, looked to drop the action just 24 hours before a San Francisco judge was to hear a bid by OpenAI to have the case thrown out. He had accused the firm, which he co-founded, and its chief executive Sam Altman of abandoning its original mission of developing artificial intelligence for the benefit of humanity and not for profit. Mr. Musk, who has AI ventures of his own, has been a fierce critic of the company's use of artificial intelligence AI, and hit out this week at Apple's plans to integrate AI including ChatGPT into its devices, suggesting he could ban them at his own companies on security grounds. He has yet to comment on the reasons for dropping the case. It was separately revealed on Tuesday that Mr. Musk was facing a separate lawsuit in Delaware brought by an institutional investor in Tesla. The Employees Retirement System of Rhode Island ERSRI, claimed he and his brother Kimball, who is a director of the electric car firm, improperly sold a combined $30 billion in shares between late 2021 and the end of 2022. The lawsuit claims they cashed in ahead of developments that would have caused stock to fall and value became public. It alleged Mr. Musk sold the shares at artificially inflated prices by concealing his plan to use proceeds to buy social media platform Twitter, which he later renamed X. He was also said to have sold Tesla stock when he knew deliveries of Tesla cars had fallen far below public projections, the lawsuit added. Mr. Musk and Tesla were yet to comment on the action, which further alleged poor governance and inappropriate actions including diverting Tesla employees to work at X and causing Tesla to start paying for advertising on Twitter. Tesla shareholder Michael Perry filed a similar action last month alleging insider dealing by Mr. Musk, who is already facing a regulatory investigation over his purchase of Twitter. News of the latest lawsuit was revealed two days before Tesla shareholders are due to vote on whether to reinstate Mr. Musk's $56 billion paid package after a Delaware judge voided it in January because she found he had improperly controlled the process. <coughs> Transgender swimmer Lea Thomas can't compete in Olympics after losing legal battle. Transgender swimmer Lea Thomas can't compete in the Olympics after she lost her legal battle to have the rules barring her participation overturned. The 25-year-old rose to prominence after she won the women's NCAA college swimming title back in March 2022, the U.S. highest college title. However, during the summer of that year's swimming's governing body, World Aquatics WA, introduced rule changes that would bar anyone who has undergone any part of male puberty from competing in the female category. Thomas previously swam for Pennsylvania's men's team for three seasons before starting hormone replacement therapy in early 2019, so was affected by the rule change. In response to the ruling, she launched a legal challenge, asking the Court of Arbitration for Sport CAS, to overturn the rules because they were, she argued, invalid, unlawful and discriminatory. However, her case was thrown out on a technicality because Thomas was simply not entitled to engage with eligibility to compete in WA competitions such as the Olympics or World Championships as she was no longer a member of US Swimming. The decision ends any remaining hopes Thomas had of competing in the Olympics. The three-judge panel added, the panel concludes that she lacks standing to challenge the policy and the operational requirements in the framework of the present proceeding. World Aquatics said it welcomed the CAS decision and said, we believe is a major step forward in our efforts to protect women's sport. USA Swimming had previously granted her request for self-identity verification as part of its policy on athlete inclusion. But the judges said USA Swimming had no authority to modify such scope of application of the world governing body's rules. Thomas was represented at CAS by Toronto-based Tier, the legal firm that has represented two-time Olympic champion runner Castor Semenya. Semenya is excluded from running in her specialist 800-meter event by World Athletics rules on athletes with differences in sex development who have elevated levels of testosterone. Swimming's policy on transgender athletes was followed by other top-tier Olympic sports who also excluded from women's events people who have potentially gained lasting physical advantages from going through male puberty. 
The CAS judges declined World Aquatics' request for Thomas to pay its legal costs and other expenses incurred in the case. Tom Hardy 100% up for role in Peaky Blinders film. Tom Hardy has said he would 100% want to appear in the new Peaky Blinders film but was not sure if his character will be involved. The English actor played Jewish gang leader Alfie Solomons from season 2 of the hit series. Despite falling at the hands of Killian Murphy's Thomas Shelby in season 5, Hardy has fought for his character's return. Earlier this month, Netflix confirmed a Peaky Blinders film is in the works, with Oscar-winning Irish actor Murphy reprising his role. At the UK gala screening of his new film, The Bike Riders, Hardy appeared to show he was keen on being involved in the upcoming project. He said, 100% Alfie will definitely make an appearance, but I don't know when, and I don't even know if he will, that's just me punting. The return of Peaky Blinders follows on from the BBC show about a Birmingham crime gang created by Stephen Knight, which ran for six seasons from 2013 to 2022. It will be helmed by season one director Tom Harper. No release date has been announced, but the storyline is rumored to take the Shelby family into the Second World War. Hardy made it clear about his eagerness to join the Peaky Blinders film while at a screening for the bike riders. The Jeff Nichols film stars Hardy as the leader of a motorcycle club, called The Vandals, in 1960s Midwest America. It looks at a love triangle of sorts between characters played by Hardy, Austin Butler and Jodie Comer. It's not a bad triangle to be in. Tom is such a dynamic performer and I've also just really admired him for a long time, said Butler on the red carpet in Mayfair. The Bike Riders is in cinemas on June 21st. <laughs> Remote Scottish island of Mullagrack on market for $638,600. A remote island in Scotland's Summer Isles boasting a rugged coastline with sheltered coves, caves and cliffs to explore has gone on the market for bids starting at $638,600. Mullagrack is a little under 89 acres in size and is just a 35-minute boat ride from Mulborny Harbour on the Northwest Highland mainland. Visitors will also have to wear outdoor clothing, sturdy footwear and be fit enough to travel by boat and climb ladders to reach the island. Mullagrack has a low environmental heather-clad roofed cabin, which selling agent Galbraith said blends into the landscape. The cabin's interior features a kitchen area, wood burning stove and two box beds. Solar panels provide power and there is an outside composting toilet. There is also a rainwater collection system, but drinking water is bottled. Mullagrack was purchased by the owners 18 years ago with a view to conserving and improving the vegetation and wildlife. The island is home to a number of seabirds, including great skua, kittiwakes, shag, fulmers and geese. Alongside the island, Galbraith is also handling the joint sale of Mullagrack House. The coastal property within the hamlet of Polbane on the Koigak Peninsula can be snapped up on its own for $504,500. For both the house and island together, the owners are looking for offers over $1,143,200. The Summer Isles and the southern coast of the Koigak Peninsula form a major part of the Wester Ross Marine Protected Area. The area boasts sandy beaches and is popular for sea kayaking, diving, sea fishing and island cruises. Fiddy Robertson, who is handling the sale at Galbraith, said, This is an exciting opportunity to acquire not just a lovely coastal home but also an island, offering the ultimate private getaway. The island is a haven for wildlife and the owners have created a small cabin, which is well equipped, to enable full enjoyment of the island with minimal impact on the abundant bird life. The setting is absolutely magical and would offer a wonderful opportunity to relax and reconnect with nature. <laughs>